welcome to this video i welcome you all to my channel all about mechanical engineering for today's video the topic of discussion is basics of thermodynamics in the previous video we have discussed basic terms of thermodynamics such as system surrounding boundary various types of systems and properties of the system in today's video we'll try to understand what is heat transfer what is work transfer various modes of heat transfer specific heat sensible heat and latent heat so let us start what is heat and what is work we all know heat and work are forms of energy in order to understand heat and work we should remember that open system and closed system can have energy interaction with the surrounding now this energy interaction can be heat or work so how to identify the energy interaction is heat or work let us understand consider the following examples the first example consider you have a hot cup of coffee maintained at 70 degree celsius as your system which is placed in cool environment at 20 degree celsius because of increased temperature that is 70 degree celsius the internal energy available at your system that is 70 degree celsius you have higher amount of internal energy because internal energy is a function of temperature after some period of time this cup of coffee will be having the same temperature as that of surrounding that is 20 degree celsius once you have 20 degree celsius achieved means internal energy of the system gets decreased because of decrease in temperature that means some amount of energy is transferred to the surrounding from this system means there is an energy interaction between system and surrounding consider another example suppose you have a closed container in which you have certain amount of water and you are heating it it should be noted that burner is placed in the surrounding and heat is transferred to the system means energy is crossing the boundary it is going from surrounding to the system after certain period of time pressure and temperature of this water will be higher than initial conditions and because of higher temperature internal energy of the system will be more than initial condition means there is an energy interaction because of which internal energy of this system is increasing now something is common in these two examples in both the examples energy interaction is happening between system and surrounding and the responsible factor for both energy interactions is temperature difference so if the energy interaction is due to temperature difference between the system and surrounding then that energy interaction is called as heat transfer as per definition the energy interaction between system and surrounding for which the driving force is a temperature difference is called as heat transfer means driving force means responsible factor now consider these examples suppose you have a system which is closed and you have a stirrer placed inside and that stirrer is connected to a pulley and using a thread we have attached to a mass now it should be noted that mass is present in the surrounding whereas stirrer is present inside the system now if we lower this mass then the stirrer gets rotated so if something is changing in the surrounding that affects my system and here stirrer gets rotated means system is affected so there should be a interaction between system and surrounding then only it is possible second example the moment you switch on a table fan it starts working any machine which starts working needs an input means some amount of energy is given to this fan and that's how it starts working in both the examples one thing is common that there is an energy interaction and that energy interaction is not due to temperature difference so if the energy interaction is not due to temperature difference then that energy interaction between system and surrounding is called as work transfer as per definition the energy interaction between system and surrounding even at thermal equilibrium condition is called as 
work transfer. Now, similarities between heat and work. The first similarity is heat and work both are forms of energy. Second, heat and work cannot be stored in any system and they are recognized as they cross the boundary, hence they are called as boundary phenomena. It should be noted that your system can never store heat and can never store work. Heat and work comes into picture when you have energy crossing the boundary. That energy crossing the boundary can be termed as heat if it is crossing the boundary due to temperature difference between system and surrounding. Whereas, if it is not happening due to temperature difference, then that energy interaction is called as work. Third, heat and work are path functions. This means the value of heat and work available during a process depends on the path followed during that process. Fourth, both are inexact differentials. Now, what is path function, how the value depends and what is inexact differentials we'll discuss in detail in next coming video. For today, the next topic is modes of heat transfer. Consider you have a candle and you are heating a metal rod by placing one end over the candle. Now, metal rod is a solid structure in which you have molecules and atoms, a fixed location that means you have a fixed structure. Once you start heating, you are exciting molecules, atoms and electrons available at this region. As we all know, because of fixed structure, molecules and atoms are restricted from movement and they cannot move. But it is impossible to restrict an electron. Once it is excited, it starts jumping from one atom to another and starts traveling from high temperature region and to a low temperature region because of which you have transfer of energy with the help of electron from one point to another. Once it loses heat here, again it comes back to a high temperature region, gains heat and then goes back. This is how it is happening because from high temperature when the electrons are coming to the low temperature region, it is not possible to have two different electron configuration in the same material. So, in order to balance electron configuration, from this point, electron starts moving towards hot area. So, the first mode of heat transfer that is conduction, when the heat transfer is due to movement of electrons and vibrational energy formation, then the mode of heat transfer is called as conduction. It should be noted that conduction is dominant in solids. Now, second mode of heat transfer. Consider you have a hot body which is kept in the surrounding air. Now, once the air molecules and atoms comes in contact with this hot body, molecule and atom will absorb certain amount of heat from this body, will get excited and will move from this high temperature region to a low temperature region. Means here molecules and atoms, their movement is not restricted. So the second mode of heat transfer that is convection, when the heat transfer is due to movement of molecules and atoms itself, then the mode of heat transfer is called as convection. It should be noted that convection is dominant in liquids and gases because in liquids as well as gases, movement of molecules and atoms is not restricted. Before going to third mode of heat transfer, it should be noted that for conduction and convection, there are two necessary conditions. The first one is there should be a temperature difference between system and surrounding and there should be a medium to transfer it. If any of these conditions is not available, out of these two, if any of this is absent, then conduction and convection cannot take place. But our third mode of heat transfer does not need these two conditions. What is that? We all know we receive sun energy in the form of radiations from sun to the earth's surface. Earth's surface has an atmosphere up to certain kilometers after which you don't have any atmosphere means you have complete vacuum. Because of that vacuum, no medium is available means you cannot have conduction and convection means sun cannot give energy to earth in the form of 
heat energy in using conduction and convection so how it gives energy to earth that is the third form of third mode of heat transfer that is radiation when the heat transfer is due to electromagnetic waves radiated from a body then the mode of heat transfer is called as radiation it should be noted that any body at a temperature greater than absolute zero radiates heat and for radiation temperature difference is not mandatory and even medium is not required now specific heat as per definition of specific heat the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by 1 degree is called as specific heat it should be noted we are talking about raising the temperature by 1 degree that of unit mass that is 1 kg that much amount of heat is called as specific heat now there are two specific heat capacities the first one specific heat at constant pressure that is denoted by cp the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by 1 degree when the heat is supplied at constant pressure is called as specific heat at constant pressure second specific heat at constant volume denoted by cv the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a unit mass of a substance by 1 degree when the heat is supplied at constant volume is called as specific heat at constant volume now sensible heat consider this example in order to understand better suppose you have water in a container which is at 0 degree celsius once you start heating to this container temperature starts increasing from 0 degree let us consider you have reached 100 degree celsius why we have taken 100 as a value because this is the saturation temperature of water and this is boiling point means once 100 is achieved then water starts evaporating it starts changing its phase from liquid to gas so as per definition of sensible heat the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance from 0 degree celsius to the saturation temperature without changing its phase is called as sensible heat means whatever energy whatever heat energy you have supplied in order to change the temperature from 0 degree celsius to saturation temperature in our case for water it is 100 degree celsius this much heat which is spent is called as sensible heat now latent heat in the same example when you have 100 degree celsius reached if again you are continuing the heating process then we all know water starts evaporating so as per definition the amount of heat required for changing the phase of a substance at constant saturation temperature is called as latent heat means the amount of heat which is associated with phase change process is called as latent heat and that is possible only at constant saturation temperature so this was all about today's session hope you have enjoyed this session thank you for watching this video please like and subscribe our channel